And then he said to me, Keisha, I get it. I get the business case for diversity and inclusion. My question to you is what do I, as an average white guy who is not an executive, do tactically to be an ally to my black coworkers? Why, thanks for asking. And boy, do I have some juicy actions for you to do today. Are you ready? Let's do this. By the way, this is the second part of a three-part video series where we talk about how to dismantle systemic racism in corporations. If you have not watched the first video on exactly what leaders can do, check it out in the link above. All right, let's get into the contents of this video. So juicy action number one is speak up, speak up, turn all the way up. And you know what that means? It means that leaders is that in an organization, they are put there to effectively execute the strategy and the vision of that organization. And they're only able to do that with a committed, motivated, and competent workforce. So that means you and I have way more power than we think, regardless of the level we are in the organization, because they need employees to be engaged, the employees to be committed, they need employees to be motivated, they need employees to show up as their best selves to be able to bring the value that the cor corporation need them to bring. And so if one employee speaks up and says, you know what, I don't like this action, that's one thing. They may be able to retaliate against that employee. They may be able to discipline that employee for speaking up. But let me tell you, if 10, 20, 30, if everybody is speaking up against injustices and giving voice to it and challenging it, it is absolutely imperative that that organization begins to actually look at what is happening, address it so that the employees can go back and do what they're supposed to be doing which is bringing value to the world through the mission of that organization. You see the challenges? A lot of us, we are so scared. We are not willing to step up and to take courage. But what I say it is, together we rise. Together we win. As Abraham Lincoln says, a house divided against itself cannot stand. So if we join forces to be able to speak up and to address these challenges, the systemic racism and bias, conscious and unconscious that we see in an organization, I guarantee you the leaders of that organization will take action. And even if they don't take action, it gives you a sign that, you know what? I have options. I live in a free country. And so if this organization is not going to live up to my values and to what I feel is my mission in my life, there are millions, hundreds hundreds of thousands of other corporations that I can go to that will be aligned to the vision and the mission that I have for my life. So if you are with this, if you agree with this, I want you to type in the comments, we are with this, I am with this, I totally agree. In the words of the late John Lewis, it is time for us to get into some good trouble. We used to be a generation, there used to be generations behind before us that were powerful. And somehow we have lost a little bit of our backbone, but the days of, of being weak and not having a backbone are over. As you see, people are rising up in the streets to make sure that their voices are heard. But I don't want us to just rise up in the streets. We wanna rise up also on Wall Street. So, as I said, in the beginning of this video, we have some juicy tips and I'm about to take you behind the curtain under the hood with some of the strategies that I have used within organizations that have effectively allowed us to improve our diversity metrics and really create a culture of inclusion. Action item number two is to become a micro sponsor. A sponsor is someone who uses their social capital to open doors to individuals that they didn't have access to or to also bring awareness to that individual's fabulous contributions. And when we talk about sponsors, we're typically referring to a leader or an executive with a broad sphere of influence. However, regardless of our levels within the organization, we have our own sphere of influence. And so as a micro sponsor, you are opening the door, you're given access to that 
person of color that is contributing well to the organization, that is doing outstanding work, but you know that you have the ear of your manager or another leader in the company, be an advocate for them. Speak, speak out on behalf of them and bring awareness to their fabulous con contribution. And this is how you can be a micro sponsor. So I'm gonna give you four tactical ways in which you can do effectively micro sponsoring. I can't even say the word, micro sponsoring. A, highlight your peers' contribution. Bring awareness to a product, a project, or a piece of work that that employee did that had quantifiable or even qualitative impact. B is to restore credit. If you notice that someone else is talking about the work of your peer of color without giving them appropriate credit, you can say something as simple and non-confrontational as, hey John, I am so glad that Alicia shared this information with you and that you're bringing her contributions to today's discussion. That's all you have to say, nothing else. Give them the side eye later, but that's all you have to say. C is visibility to leadership opportunities. If you hear about leadership opportunities or roles that are within the competency of your peer of color, insert their name, throw their name in as an option and then explain why they would be a great candidate for this position. D is to teach them the rules of the game. If you notice that your peer of color is not very skilled in certain situations, maybe because of their cultural background, how they were raised, they did not have exposure to certain situations, certain levels of leadership, and you notice that they're not utilizing these opportunities as effectively as they could, and you're extremely skilled in this area, share with them a little bit of your knowledge. Be a mentor of sorts so that they can understand what the unwritten rules of the game are and that they can set themselves up to win. Action item number three is to present a united front. I alluded to this in the beginning of the video when I said, that we cannot do or actually achieve much progress when we're trying to do this in isolation. Black people cannot do this alone, white Americans can't do this alone, Asian Americans can't do this alone, Hispanics can't do this alone, Native Americans can't do this alone. We've got to work together because when we realize that, as Martin Luther King says, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And the reality is that in certain situations, it is more appropriate or actually more palatable for one group of people to be able to speak up against an injustice more than the other. We want to live in a society where when anybody speaks up, it will be heard, but that is not the reality. People get triggered by various situations, and it is a lot more effective if a white male calls out racism to another white male than if a black female calls out racism to a specific white male. They just get triggered. That is a fact, that is the reality. And this is why we all have a role. This is one of the many reasons I should say we have a role to play in this. I know that we wanna be idealistic and pretend that this shouldn't be the case, but it is the case, it is a reality. So we gotta work with the reality that we're dealing with. And it reminds me of a situation that when I was in an organization, the, the light bulb hit and there were passionate people within the organization that saw specific systemic bias in the organization that they wanted to change. And so we said, you know what, we're gonna gather our own little uh, internal coup. And so it consisted of diverse people, a black female, that was me, and then there was the white per white woman, the white male, the Hispanic, everybody. And we said, okay, we're gonna go to this meeting and we know exactly who is gonna get triggered and who's gonna say what. So Brad, the white guy across the room, you're gonna, when this situation comes up, you're gonna speak and you're gonna address it because guess what? They're gonna listen to you more and they're not gonna get as triggered if you say it to them, then if I, as a black female, say it to them. You see what I'm saying? So use strategy, get a plan together, get a group of people together. We keep on talking about that we wanna see change and transformation, and it requires courage to do so. It is not easy work, but no change that lasts, no change that is important, no change that is actually truly transformational is easy. And that's why everybody will not engage in these activities. 
But we're not here to do what's easy. We're here to do what is right and what is aligned to our own values. And so, as I said, it requires a lot of courage. If you haven't seen my video, How to Be Courageous in Business and in Life as a Woman, then check out my video. I will link it above for you to be able to go back and look at this video so that you can build some courage in your life. Action number four is to challenge bias and microaggressions by calling it out, especially in scenarios where you see that criteria is being applied inconsistently, inconsistently across group. The most obvious one that we'll talk about combines gender and race. In many situations, a male, especially a white male, will say something with authority and influence and conviction, and he will be looked at as a leader, as a leader who is confident and bold and speaks with authority. And a black female, could say exactly the same thing with exactly the same tone and she's referred to as angry and as aggressive and God forbid, you know, the B word. And if you see that happening, I want to challenge you to challenge those statements and say, hey, Brad, <laughs> you know, in this scenario, you said that Alicia was aggressive and assertive. However, this person and this or this person in the organization is being rewarded for the same exact behavior. Can you help me understand what's the difference between that person speaking this way versus her? Really, it is to bring light, to bring, to bring knowledge to that blind spot that many people have in organization where they're applying different criteria. And as, as I said it before, in the last point, it is, it is going to be a lot more palatable if someone of the same demographic like a male challenges a male than if a female challenges the male. Got it? Okay. Action number five is quick, easy, and simple. Doesn't require a lot of explanation. It is make introductions to your powerful network. So if you have a mentor, sponsor, or advocate that has allowed you to accelerate your career, make some introductions to your coworker, your peer of color, to this mentor, sponsor, or advocate. So those are all my juicy actions. I want you to drop in the comments below which action, which point resonated with you the most or which one you had a question on. And in next week's video, I'm going to talk about self-care for black employees and specifically why asking black employees to teach others about racism can be traumatic and why organizations shouldn't do this and what to do instead. Right, that's all for now my friends I see you and I believe in you and don't forget you are not meant to shrink down lower so rise up and own your power have a fantastic week